Welcome to Time Bolt Office Hours on Thursday, February 22nd, 2024. You are live with Doug and Quinston. We are here to check your workflows, answer your questions, and generally just make sure that you get the best out of Time Bolt. You have a customer plan coming in for the second half. TJ had some questions. I, I sent him the an email. Yeah, no, me. you were totally right. I can't believe with my own software, I couldn't, I didn't think <laughs> of that. I was wanting to kick myself in the shins. That was kind of impossible. TJ, how are you doing? Hey, TJ. Gentlemen, good to see you again. Good to see you too. TJ, I'm sorry, I gave you some bad advice. You had asked yesterday about, well, I could have given you better advice. You had asked yesterday about quickly removing everything up to a point. Let's say you had 20 minutes into a video and you wanted to start there. You could have trimmed before you start. There's no point in doing that because we have quick keys. It, you could have gotten to the point where you wanted to be at to start and then just simply hit the B key. There was no need to add a marker and then go back and okay. just hit, just hold down the B key and it, it'll just back cut everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and though it... Yeah, and the interesting use, thing I is use, that I use the uh, the marker just to let me see where it was in the first thirty minutes of the hour long thing. Like we had twenty minutes of pre call, and then okay. we kicked off the call right there, but we never turned off the recording, turned it back on again because they like to turn the, it on at the pre. They don't forget to uh, turn on the recording when the customers come on board. The interesting thing is when you hit the B key, right? You can actually see the amount of uh, time that has been uh, removed from the timeline because when you hit the B key, the message at the bottom of the timeline which shows how much uh stuff has been removed it updates every single time a cut gets removed so you can hit the b key and until that's updating you can know how many cuts have been removed and then once it stops updating that all the cuts are gone you can just hold it down and you can just like let me show you if you didn't really yeah, catch please, what i said do i bring the video head to the 23 minutes into the yeah correct exactly let's yeah. say this is the video right and you just like yeah. uh 17 minutes let's go to 20 okay let's go 19 and 20 somewhere around here let's say i want to start from this cut right now check this out. Output shoulder by is yep. over here, right? Now, when yep. I start pressing B, it starts changing because I'm pressing B and the yep. cuts are getting turned off as I keep pressing it. Now, if I hold it down, I'm holding it down and see that it's changing rapidly. And then yep. at some point it will stop. Which means I get to the beginning of the- uh, Exactly, which means all Shit. of the beginning cuts are removed nice. where it stops essentially. Nice. That's a part of the UI. I don't know because so these little quirks and features of the time board is only known there's by not, experts. There's no quirks in time <laughs> board. Only known by like, well, I'm pissed, man. I just got I done with the biggest like onboard oh. video and i'm like <laughs> what you did what doug please record this there are no quirks in time bolt these are features thank you uh, expensive you cars have quirks, right <laughs> I, I am having i am having one problem and it has to and i has to do with my setup with this uh, new computer with the new company we use teams for some reason i get my own recording to come in like you mind if i share you the screen there's no confidential stuff in here yeah let me just uh, i don't know let's see here share uh, i want number you can see my screen here well that's not really dead stuff that's other people talking in teams and then you'll hear this over here also coming in monday morning did you hear that or do i have to share my sound or something no, I, I can hear that. So if I come over to here, start at the beginning, I'll come, I'll start it here. That was me. Stuff. Hang on, let me get past that. Is that like the caller tune? I'm not sure. But this right here is uh, everyone else talking. And you can see a little bit bump in there, but you can see the thing here. People are talking. John's actually talking. No, not right now. We're just getting the uh, student labs all set up for uh, Accenture uh, next week. And but as you can see, that's all me. I, I, I didn't get any of the other stuff here. And when I do the recording piece. I think what's happening here is system audio. The, the, it's not recording system audio. But I tried each one of these things. I tried the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 chat, the main. Uh, those are the only options I have. And then this one right here is obviously the cam link, but that's just used for my video. On Win, uh, I, I don't think Timebolt can record uh, system audio at the moment. Uh, there are plugins that you can use for this. Like uh, there's something called Sunflower. Okay. Sunflower basically takes uh, your system audio and basically multiplexes it with your mic or audio. And then feeds it back as like a separate audio audio option that you can select in the input. It's just a yeah, Mac or Windows. Um, I, I can do it on my other Windows machine. This is Windows 10. My Windows 11 machine, I don't have any problems with the Roadcaster Pro 2. Okay. G gathering yeah. both stuff. But I don't, and I thought it might have been a Teams thing, a Microsoft Teams thing. It's not because if I, I, I ran a Zoom call on the a company laptop and not recording that as well, I'm not sure what the problem is. I, I, I think you have set it up on your other machine. It's just that this machine probably isn't configured in that manner. I'm sorry, Doug, go ahead. Are, are you record? Are you recording just, you're trying to get system audios. So you're not getting a recording from Microsoft Teams. You're recording with Timebolt. I want to do everything in Timebolt because I want to grab the recording from Timebolt. I don't want to have to go to Teams, wait for it to render, mm -hmm. wait for it to get downloaded, just like Zoom. And I, then I can bring it right into Timebolt, cut everything, drop it into a DaVinci. So that's what I'm saying. For this to work uh, correctly, to 
access system audio, you'll need to use a plugin like Sun Sunflower, which will multiplex uh, the system audio with the actual audio from the mic so that you get one file, which one input uh, device, which then you can select in the select audio input section. I hear what you're saying. I'll check into Sunflower. But what I'm saying is that my yeah. Windows 11 machine using the same Rodecaster Pro 2, because I just removed the USB-C from the work laptop to my own personal one. I don't have any issues with it. I don't need to have a oh. plugin. Yeah. Do you, if you play a video right now on your computer and you record it with Timebolt, will it come through with the system audio or is it, or, or is it coming through with your catching mic audio from your system? It's coming into the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 chat, which is the same setting that I have on the uh, Windows 11 machine, my personal machine as well. And if I go to Windows system settings and I go to a microphone and I go to uh, you know, speakers and stuff, th those are pointing correctly. I just can't figure it out. I'll keep working on it. We have somebody else on the uh, line with us here. So why don't we get going? Sounds good. Marcel, how you doing? Hey there. Hey, together. Hey, you all. Nice uh, to I'm meet you. I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Yeah, thanks. Hey, can you uh, give us a little bit of background about the uh, type of content you make and how you oh. found Timebolt and how we might be able to help you Today? Yeah, sure. I'm actually using Timebolt since I have it open right now. Over a year, I guess. I stumbled over it through the Premiere Pro plugin. Actually, I came through from a YouTuber. I don't know which one. And it looked pretty <laughs> promising, pretty good. I looked into it. Uh, I, then I figured out that the Timebolt editing and Premiere Pro work separately. And then when I figured that out, uh, I found a workflow. And now up until today, I'm working on like editing podcasts, a VH, V, how do you say? VSL, like a video sales letter. Okay. Video a sales video letter. letter? I've never heard of that. Video sales letter. I've never heard of this before. Video sales letter. Some kind of marketing tool that you oh. uh, use. Just a advert like these. Uh, these, these oh, yeah. So by TV employees. channels for, for our company. It's a video that goes like an hour and it's just pitch, sell, all the information surrounding our company in a one hour video. And we sure nice. have like 10 hours of raw footage to go through. So time will help me out a lot there. <laughs> VSL, like an asynchronous sales pitch. Uh, if that's the thing, I, I just know it as a VSL, as a video sales letter. So people can watch the pitch whenever they have time. So we either work with webinars or we work with these kind of videos. Excellent. So yeah, it helped me out a lot. And are you finding, it sounded like you were, it was a kind of a disappointment to you almost when you found out it was a separate app, a separate app. Do you do <laughs> yeah, any yeah. other editing outside of Premiere? Like are um, all your videos going in Premiere? Mostly. I, I'm working only in Adobe, Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro. I know this like leaving the software, but then... When I figured it out all, uh, when I figured it out all out, uh, then it was not not much of a big deal. I think people get pretty. Uh, the people that know about these individual plugins, like for Premiere, I saw. I'm watching the videos, Quincy. I'm watching like some of the videos, like oh, this AutoPod thing is is incredible. I leave in the comments, and I'm like looking at it. It, it is like this. I see in the video, he's just kind of going through the settings, right? And there was a setting that said padding point two, and I was like, I asked in the comments, I was like, hey, I was like, uh, have you ever tried putting your padding to point oh one for the start of the word, and then? 0.15 for I haven't tried that setting yet. <laughs> well, you can't like you you're padding. You don't get a left and right padding. There's 0.2. Like imagine if the front and end and the cutoff of words started at 0.2, not 0.01 and 0.15. That's terrible. Yeah. That's a very slow and video. His reply that was cut is reply very was, slow. Hundred percent. His reply was. Oh, uh, he goes, I'll actually try that, Patty. And I do have to go back and continually slide over the point of the software. Yeah, exactly. So the reason we have so, to yeah. do that. What Doug is trying to do is Doug is trying to explain why the padding is so important and that why you need to update the padding in the software before you apply the cuts. Y y yes. And the control that Timebolt gives you over those cuts, I think, is kind of the learning curve that we have to get over. Unless you like sloppy starts to cuts and going back and fixing words and stuff like that. I'm glad you got a chance to uh, work with Timebolt and be being in a work environment, uh, Marcel, outside of doing stuff with Premiere and you're being in the creative, uh, being in the creative realm that you are, I don't know how often you have to explain what you're doing in a video or like do it like any asynchronous video communications that might save you from jumping on a Zoom call and having to explain something. I don't know if you use video for that. Timebolt also handles those workflows as well, completely integrated. So if you want to do any type of capture, if you want to you know, get on video yourself and say, hey, look, this is the project I'm working on, for example, to save yourself writing a five paragraph email. And instead you turn it into a 10 minute video of you talking, but you're not sending a 10 minute video of you talking and people, which people actually don't like you for, right? Like, like yeah. no one is happy to get an eight minute loom, right? That's like yes. unedited. Oh, I'm glad it saved you an ass load of time, but now I'm going to have to sit here and drudge through this. That makes you not even want to make video knowing you're going to upset that cause you to go ahead and write the five paragraph email. Well, maybe they'll read it, set up a zoom call. I would like to invite you to also think about Timebolt as an expansive tool for what it'll, how it allows you to communicate with 
the video. With Capture, I'd recommend taking a look. At, have you ever used Capture in Time Bolt? I, I did use Capture on Time Bolt, but just for uh, footage because I'm working on a Mac and I don't, I can't, cannot figure out how I can implement the output. I just picked up it. I, I just joined at the right time because the topic just was dead. Uh, yeah. Talking about the audio capture. So now I'm working with Streamlabs OBS and hmm. Time Bolt together. So that's like my combination. So I can separate audio lines because we have like these community calls every day almost. And they, those go like for over an hour. And I sit in there because I'm the CTO. I have to kind of watch over things that happen. But I cannot be there one and a half hours just listening to them all. So I just let it capture and do my own stuff in the background. That's also something I enjoy in Streamlabs that I can capture a window from a separate layer yeah. and can do stuff in front of this window without it being captured. Now I found my kind of workflow, uh, figured everything out pretty good. Also the background sounds like WhatsApp, Discord popping up and everything. All right, is that kind of why you're here today? Is, is to oh, no. talk about the audio or are you just trying to just join in the call? No, I just wanted to uh, be here. Listen, nice. pick up some stuff, also <laughs> learn some takes, uh, tips and tricks. So you're dealing with very long files then, right? The first tip that I would recommend to you, like it sounds like you're using it both for personal communications, like how can you get information in without having to sit through a live call and then what you're outputting is like the company. I'm basically using it for almost everything. Whenever I edit <laughs> stuff, I <laughs> most almost out of habit, just put it through a time bolt yeah. uh, just to I, see I, how much there can be cut off of silence and noise, whatever, for like our video academy for our video sales letter for the community calls for my own calls I, I prefer that over loom what i would recommend what i recommend if you're talking about like just personal communication so let's say you have an important call with a customer okay and, or you're giving getting some creative feedback what i always typically like to do is record those conversations and then i've got a dog and sometimes whether i'm walking the dog or i'm running or something like that i'll catch up and like re-listen to conversations that i've had that were important things that i might have not picked up on well obviously you can throw that into time bolt here and what i do okay with those types of conversations after i cut out the dead air i'll basically just uh, i'll even run um check on my own stuff because it removes an extra 10 20 percent of time in addition to 20 percent of time removing dead air i go to activate turbo mode i put it on 1.3x okay because i can easily understand conversations like that you don't have to do that you don't have to put it on turbo mode and then what i'll do is here i'll go download and Add to render queue as a WAV file. So this will rip off an audio only file extremely fast. It renders a dub audio only file extremely fast. Then what I do is I share that audio only file with my phone. And now I've got a lightweight MP3 or WAV mm. that I'm listening to when I'm running. As far as like how to personally communicate, just be a more be more effective uh, when you get information. That's how I use it. When it comes to actually capturing video, okay. If I'm at work and I'm sending and I look like a YouTuber in every video that I send out, that is a way to create a, a competitive advantage. You're not going to be part of the bottom 25% when the cuts come, right? Times are extremely tough. So video is still a good way to stand out. You just don't want to stand out because you're boring to watch. That's a whole different problem. But with the screen recorder, what I would like to show, I've got this hooked in and I do system audio. I can do system audio. I'm not doing it right now because I have to go in and change my MIDI setup and stuff. I basically have the screen flick loop back or the I, like this final aggregate device that it takes me a second but you can capture system audio this way through the mac but again right now it's just a yeti nano all right i'll put my what this is and what i like to do you don't need to record in hd for internal video if you're like giving up some feedback so let's say i want to let's just start recording boom starts recording typically you're not recording time bolt that's why it completely disappears right but you're just recording what was nice is i chose standard small okay quick and small versus the hd in the end you're going to end up with a five minute file that's like 30 megabits not 300 megabits right because then you're like what the hell do i do with this but after you get done recording so this is all integrated instead of writing a five paragraph email you can get online and have a conversation talk about the creative feedback and after you get done, I hit stop recording. And Quinson, this was actually one thing I was going to ask you about. Like my capture window always is over. I always kind of do the bottom right. Whenever it comes up with a save, I always have to move that capture window before I do anything. Just to kind of, but other than that, this is a streamlined workflow. Things pop in together. They close together. It makes sense. This has been thoroughly optimized with some uh, B2B influencers as well. It's going to auto push that file right into time bolt if you want. Okay, now you've got a fully jump cut video. What I do here, if I'm sending, if it, like there's stuff that you want to send to Slack, right? I could go activate turbo mode because there's no, Quinston likes it when I talk at 1.3x speed, right? Like I can, when it's jump cut and fast, you can almost expect the other person is, if they're interested in it, they're going to watch it because it's 
and thank you for sending it. You just basically do export video and it quickly renders, okay? Now, there's gonna be times though where maybe, you're, maybe you've gotta submit a support ticket or you can't upload a single small file you know, to Slack and it might just be faster to do this. After it throws on its turbo mode, I'll just wait for it to get done. So let's see how big this file is. That file is 6.9 megabits, okay? That's, and it's still very much discernible and watchable and you can see it and it's not like the quality sucks, okay? It's not 4K for YouTube, but it's rapid video communications, right? But then what you can do is, in addition to just ripping one off a, a, on your computer, go to activate turbo mode. This is called send a banger, okay? This is like Loom, but doesn't suck to watch. Just activate turbo mode, put this on 1.3. So this is a link to an unlisted video that you can basically create and capture a video, cut out 85% of stuff makes you hate to sound your own voice and create a shareable link in less time than it takes to record live, which is you can change a culture with this. Imagine every employee, that's just a copy and five clicks, boom, it starts recording. Typically you're not recording time bolt. That's why it completely disappears, right? But you're just recording. What was nice is I chose standard small, okay, quick and small versus the HD. As you can see, you've got a link to an unlisted video so that you can put that inside support tickets. You can put it when you can't actually upload a file and that is loom, but doesn't suck to watch. That's pretty much all the, Marcel, do you have any questions about that or anything? Like not at all. I, 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 I kind of sell in love with time bolt with the time it saves it's for me like a but i do have a problem with my account currently but that's like something i kind of wanted to feedback if possible i do miss some kind of intranet member platform where i can log in change my bank details change my address whatsoever because i think i have to do that by mail currently yes you Online? cannot you cannot change your email if anybody has to change an email they have to contact me. you can't change your email but as far as like changing your account stuff it, in in Tenbolt, there is a there is now a manage account key oh, you, okay well i you completely missed that yeah there's a manage account key there there's we have uh we've added it to every place you can possibly uh account right here right it's but that's where you'd be able to actually update your details oh there I go <laughs> absolutely the other thing is the other thing marcel is that like i've been i use this all the time just like your just like yourself like if i was a competitor i would need time bolt because of how much i use it for like capturing and just doing random stuff the other things that are really interesting about this is like let's say you get oh you're in marketing and you've got like a a five gig file or something like that. And you got to upload it to the web, right? and you, but you don't need it to be five gigs. There's this nice little thing called the re-encoder and you can just drop your file in and it'll re-encode at a lower bit, like still maintain good enough quality right? Like it, it'll maintain a good enough quality, but at a lower bit rate, so you can do it that way. And it also helps with like, if you're capturing things, like if you need to make gifts for websites or gifts for emails, you can capture it with time bolt, run it through the captures of quick and small. And now all of a sudden your file sizes are manageable. When you're uploading it to Giphy maker, there's you're hitting the hundred megabit upload size. It, it's really kind of a good way to re-encode your stuff as well. If you run into any problems where your audio and video goes out of sync, especially if you're running in a company and work environment, whether people are sending you Zoom calls because they forgot to hit enable for third-party editor to mm -hmm. make it constant frame rate. We have a, this is the only variable way, this is the only way to tell if your file is variable frame rate, unless you're ready to, well, you're a CTO. Most people aren't ready to run eight lines of command line code, right? Like I'm not, I, but it's not like you can like right click and say, hey, video properties, this thing variable frame rate, is that why it's giving me so much tough of a time? No, there's like eight lines of code that Quinston compiled in into a free VFR detector. So now you just add your file, it'll run through, see how, uh, see if any variable frame rates identified. And if there are, you can just re-encode right with Timebolt into a constant frame rate. Add that same file, add that raw file in, that new raw file into Timebolt, and then all of your sync issues will uh, disappear. And then obviously you just tell the person, next time you send me a file, click this, or you fix it on the front end so you're not recording at a, a, a variable frame rate. But those are kind of, those are the neat trick handy tools. We did just come out, Marcel, with a brand new, I would highly recommend that you go to this video and you hit the subscribe button and pound. I'm just kidding here, but you go to this video. Video is a race in time. This it's is a, great a brand adversary. new onboard video but the that's gap, uh, been the doing very well. We born and watch. Uh, but this right here, I know I'm walking out of a TV screen, but this is the fastest, most concise way that I know how to educate everyone on how to use time bolt and all the unique things like you're like i, I just kind of want to learn how this there's probably a lot in time bolt you don't know about and since you have it open so much you can go through 
And like, there's some really like sculpting the timeline, the USOB keys. I'm not calling you that. Okay. It's USOB. Just at, just working with those quick keys makes editing a very fast, makes editing very fast. And then we've also got things like shorts workflows, like an employee. Some of these guys are making shorts or the marketing department's making shorts. There's a very specific way to take in vertical video, chop it up, and then export it to a free editor like CapCut. Put your transcriptions in for free. You don't need to pay for transcriptions, okay, and captions when you're adding them to like a cut video file. That stuff is free. What costs money is when you're trying to, the reason why you have to pay the pro levels to try and use their cut dead air that may, like you can't do like multiple word uh, combinations. It's just, it, and it's very slow and very difficult. But uh, the reason why you do that is because the transcriptions are paid and they give you it on a word token based level. When you cut up your timeline, you throw it in a cap cut for free. All your transcriptions are free. The only thing you're having to pay for is time bolt itself. I would definitely, let me go ahead and uh, share this with you. I'll put it in the uh, chat, but this is on the, this is what new users are all. Uh, is there something new in for like experienced users? That's what I'm saying. I don't know what about time bolt, but what's in here here is new, the newest information. Merge, you, the merge. Oh yeah. And I put that in there too. You can see it's kind of stuck nice. in here. I, I so it was definitely for exports, by the way. It's definitely for exports. And I needed that, right? But this is the thing. Imagine, but I would definitely look at that video. I'm not playing. Imagine you wanted to keep this because there was something important going on here, right? You wanted to keep that cut and you wanted to keep this cut. Now, when you go export this via XML into Premiere or whatever, what happens? You've got an actual cut that you oh, are yeah. seeing. You've got an actual cut in your timeline. When like it could be just one continuous clip. Well, for that, and which you would also learn in the video, merge cons consecutive similar cuts, okay? And it takes, gives you one it takes, block. Now yeah, you got one yeah. block. I experienced that here and there. Yeah, and that's important. It's just like those little things are are important. You don't like, especially when you start doing multi-camera stuff, you should see my timeline yeah. for that beast <laughs> of a video. Oh, I mean, it, regarding the cuts, uh, I just have a quick question. Maybe uh, you guys know how to deal with that. Whenever I'm in my workflow and just comfortably editing through the video, jumping through it, uh, setting cuts myself with like the hotkeys. Um, every time I press Alt to mark the, uh, if I remember right, it's Alt yeah. to delete this part or Correct. mark it adds to be deleted. I have to go two or three frames back if I want to delete the previous one, not the front one. B, no press I mean? the B key. B would be the one to the left. So we yeah, the previous like one. It cuts out the previous one. Okay, cool. Okay, then it's B and O. Okay. And if you keep, if you hold... Doug, you have to show him what the B, B key does, man. Check it out. B stands for back cut. Okay. USOB. Uh, remember that. Every yes. USOB, click those keys, no matter what you're doing, just to kind of see what they do, because they will change how you edit forever. B, watch this. I hit B. Did you see that? Watch it. And I could back cut the whole damn, I, like. I, watch that thing over there. Watch the output sh shorter than. This? And I'll just hit B mm -hmm. and. It just like imagine you've got imagine you've got a teams meeting that's an hour and a half long and what the teacher was saying and you didn't start until 20 minutes in because you just recorded yeah. everything well all of a sudden you're up into the 20 minute mark and you're like oh shit now what do i do don't do anything stay on the existing frame and just hit b and you will see this time whittle down in a matter of a couple seconds to zero now all of a yeah. sudden everything cut is cut to that point you can move forward and go o is great for cutting forward b is great for cutting back can you show him the part where you split and then press the b key and that's yes, also interesting s and then b yeah. and so then you split and then b and the previous cut is gone so imagine you want to cut so imagine you want to cut like a you cut a word that you have like s and you go over here and you hit S. Now, instead of like, let's say I want this part gone. Okay. Instead of me going up and now going like this. Yes. I used to press like three frames backwards and then, oh, yeah. that's very inconvenient. Exactly. <laughs> Ex exactly. You hit B and now, or if you want to go forward and cut it, you can hit O. You see that? You got. You don't have to always make yeah. sure that you're putting this at 1.5x. Never leave it at one. Okay. There's no reason for you to ever watch this footage back at one x speed. Yes. Also, if you do want to know all the shortcut keys, there's a button over there with yeah, all there's the shortcuts. The button, yeah. yeah. Just remember USOB, and if you end up spreading this with inside your company, if other people are also making videos, your marketing teams, if you want to get internal video and communications, just remember this video right here will take you through exactly what Time Bolt does should be a great onboard for you. I actually did have just this happen uh, two times that I had someone editing my videos for me or content for me. Um, and I wasn't sending them a video. That would have been a great idea. I was just getting them through this by myself, onboarding them, kind of. Yes. Great. Well, it took about two months and we got models. Okay. Look, I, I think that that's, that shows that customers that we care. Okay. Like, <laughs> this isn't me. This, this ain't me. <laughs> How many years it took me to be able to convince a smoking hot model to come to the apartment and freaking 
couldn't be, get on capture. Holy shit. I, it really <laughs> took an act of God because it's just been me the whole time. This one I had to pick. This one was cool. She She's uh, she's in Australia, but 82, uh, like men are constitute like 82% of our customer base. There you go. Yeah, well, thanks. So that's about all. That's all the tricks that I basically have right now. But is there any additional questions that uh, we can answer for you, Marcel? Last, I'm sorry, last thing. We have a Teams for people in companies. I don't know how large your company is. If you wanted to get other people involved with Timebolt, we have a Teams option where you can buy manage multiple seats if an employee leaves like this is where you can use like if your employee leaves if you could change sheets seats out you can go up down and it automatically prorates and it's all based on an annual subscription it works smooth as hell oh, okay well i actually do need some changes in my account because i am using it for company purposes so it's not my private account anymore i'm using so that's why i wanted to change the mail as well as the payment information so i don't yes yeah, so you'll have to tell me about like what you want to change your email to just shoot me an email I'll take care of it. That's just one of those things that we're, we're just prioritizing as far as like what we knock out and stuff like that. Yeah. And also I don't, our company doesn't have a PayPal to do business costs with. So I would have loved to, how do you say, uh, to change it to a credit card information, but I don't yeah, think it's possible. That. It might just be helpful if you just cancel out of your existing account and just start a new one, right? It would make sense. Just cancel your existing account. I'll think I did a horrible job on the phone when I see you're canceled, but then I'll be like, oh, when you get back on. <laughs> like, damn, what do I do? Awesome. Okay, that sounds good. Well, great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I know we've got another uh, caller and you're more than welcome to stick around. I, I know we've got an interesting use case coming up here. Uh, yeah, sure. Dave, yeah, yeah. Nice What's going on, guys? Do you have a do you have video cam, man? I look like shit right now. You don't want to see this, uh, especially as we get to uh, GPT-5, uh, 6. Um, the... GPT chat, GPT reminds me of, Doug, I don't know if you're familiar with something called Eudora back in like 91, 92. It was pre-internet and it was basically an international chat uh, thing to bot that would uh, allow users to basically text message over uh, the internet. But that's how old I am. That's what chat GPT feels like to me. Let's see how six and seven integrate with time Vault, and it could be absolutely amazing. We'll see. Damn, you sound like you're like 25 or something, man. Yeah, that's a I, gift. I I was like, I'm 92. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I was the guy trying I wasn't to even dodge born in email. <laughs> like, seriously, in 96, like when I went to college, like I was trying to dodge email. I was like, who's going to use this? And I still am like, how the hell did I end up in tech after like I was the yeah. dude that was like, who's going to use email? There you go. I, I was two years cool. old in 96. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right, well, you thank you, Dave. I appreciate you joining yeah, us. Take care. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye, take care. And that's it for Time Bolt Office Hours on Thursday, February 22nd. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, the notification bell when we go live and we're out of time. Thank you.